Hi folks, Brent here. This is my revitalization of my YouTube channel. I haven't posted anything of any sort of meaning for I don't know how many years, but I think I'm going to now because I've come to the realization that I do a lot of automotive stuff, as you can see, the disgusting garage behind me, and what's obviously a race car sitting behind me. But I do a lot of mechanical stuff. I do a lot of engineering stuff. I do a lot of automotive stuff. And I know that there's a big market for people who are looking to learn or DIYers like me. And I figured we could have a little bit of fun and entertain along the way. So uh, why not throw the old YouTube channel back together? So I've got a few things coming along and down the pipeline, but uh, hopefully you'll see those very soon. So we will get it started right now. So before we actually get to, to some projects and whatever else I got going on, I might as well show you around. So the first project we got here is the race car. Uh, we pan through the giant pile of uh, scrap metal, which you'll have as a racer. Uh, anybody who races knows that. To my Cummins project, 97 Cummins 12 valve. Love this thing. Got my classic vehicle plates on her. She's a big girl. So big I can't get it in shot. Extended cab, 8-foot bed. I won't even show you the daily driver down here because, yeah, no one cares about a Focus. Don't, don't mind the other cars. Got the wife's uh, dream car project hidden in there. That'll be coming up later. Spare race car stuff. Again, giant pile of crap. So there's your quick tour of uh, the stuff I got going on. I got diesel stuff. I've got a road car that nobody gives a damn about. I also have a secret project off in the other garage that I'm not going to show anybody yet. And I also have another really secret project coming along that actually means I probably shouldn't have that in the background. Um, yes, that, no, there we go. I'm trying not to advertise anything. Anyway, um, I have a project coming along down the pipeline that I want to... Um, kind of hide and wait until we get some subscribers coming in and then maybe I'll share that with everybody else but until then uh, you'll probably see a lot of this thing so yeah again secret projects uh, my wife's dream car project which should be pretty interesting and then uh, a lot of race car stuff a lot of small engine stuff you might see a lot of uh, me screwing around with lawnmowers snowblowers chainsaws whatever the hell comes along I'm Again, it's just a complete DIY channel. I do everything here. So, again, maybe you'll find something informative. Maybe you won't. But I figure I had a YouTube channel. I had free time. I might as well help people out and maybe get some entertainment along the way. So why not? Let's do this. All right. So for today's video, I'm not going to do anything goofy or weird or anything. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm working on here. And this is, this is exactly why. I wanted to call this a DIYer or a low buck style garage or whatever. You see all these different YouTube channels out there with guys who have multiple bays and lifts and all this room and acreage and stuff. I literally just showed you everything I got. I got a one car garage. Okay. One car. That's it. That's all it fits in here. I got some places for parts over there, but it's usually stacked up with tools, tires, and other garbage because I don't have enough storage. And if you owned a race car, you'd empathize with me, especially for the giant pile of crap that's right outside the front door that's all scrap metal and junk. Uh, so yeah, anyway, this is, again, this is the kind of project that I'm typically working on at any given time. And that project is this, okay? There's one transmission on the shelf, which will, I'll show you the horror story behind that in a minute. And there's two down here. <laughs> there's another horror story behind that one and that's my parts one that one's not even mine this one it's not really mine either but um this one is that i'm trying to prep for this racing season i'm not even a transmission guy and there's the one that i've already built now you might be saying well you must work as a transmission guy or you know do all this other stuff and Frankly, I don't. I don't work in the automotive field at all, in any way. Uh, 
I work for the government. Not doing anything really horribly important. I mean, I'm not a politician, and I don't work in any agencies that, well, I can't say I don't help people. I do help some people. I mean, they, they need stuff, so I bring it to them. Let's just go there. Let's just say that that's what I do. Uh, any opinions are my own, apparently. That's the uh, disclaimer I got to give. Whatever. So I learned how to do automotive stuff and engineering stuff and all this DIY stuff. Like you'll probably see me power wash a deck. You'll probably see me paint something. You'll probably see me maybe build something onto this addition on this garage. Who the hell knows what I'm gonna do on this channel? Again, like I said, this is a toss up. This is a little bit of everything for the DIYer and the person who wants to do it themselves or even learn how to do things. So again, this is gonna be me trying to show you how to take apart a transmission. Uh, namely a Saginaw transmission, like an old 60s muscle car type of transmission before they went to the, you know, there's all sorts of different types of stuff, but anyway. Um, so I've got one transmission that has two cracked ears on it, and I don't have a spare casing for it because I don't know if I can get my hands on one. My brother might have one. I didn't ask him for it yet. I might just ask him for it, but I think I'm going to do the redneck thing first and see if that happens, and then if that doesn't work, then maybe I'll call him. Number two is, my brother has a rebuilt transmission, which was supposedly this one right here. Now, the story was that my father bought that on eBay, and you can see it's written on there. It says, 168, that's the second gear ratio, rebuilt, check oil, and then there's the problem, bushing too tight. It's supposed to be T-O-O -O tight, but, you know. Now, this transmission is our parts transmission, and... As you can see, it's got no snout on it. It sounds kind of crunchy. I don't know if there's anything wrong with it or not, but I'm going to take that transmission and fix that transmission. One thing before we get started, though. I see, yes, I am wearing gloves, okay? I don't want to hear any nonsense about wearing gloves. Oh, they're for sissies, oh, they're for wimps. Let me tell you something. I've worked on race cars for over 20 years. I'm really kind of sick of my hands getting shredded by all the oils, solvents, paints, whatever the hell else I come in contact with. It's just convenient, okay? I don't really care about your opinion, so to keep it to yourself, I'm not interested in hearing about it. All right, so what I need to do on this transmission here is crack repair one of the ears that is cracked, like from here all the way around here. I don't want to do that, but I'm going to have to because again, I don't have another I don't have another case right now and I don't really know if I want to keep this one anyway. But I already rebuilt it, so I might as well do something to try and fix it. And this is broken all the way around here on this edge as well. Probably can't see it, but it's really hard for me to put a camera on my workbench because of everything in the way. So Bear with me here. So instead of, oh, these are old. Anyway, instead of welding this thing up right now, I'm going to work on the other transmission. And I'll show you exactly how a transmission comes apart, like a Saginaw, three speed. Oh, that's not on too strong or nothing. Oh yeah, that's even better. Great. You know, sometimes you just need a bigger tool. And I don't care that you had to put a little reducer on it and put a 3-8 socket on it. Who cares? Break it. It doesn't matter. Just get the job done. All right. And whoever put this transmission together and put freaking cap screws in it, die. That's stupid. You're just changing hardware for the sake of changing hardware. What a dumb idea. Harbor Freight. Guns. Alright, what do we got here? Front. Hey, that came off. If you're not using power tools like this, you're just wasting your life.
Again, cap screws, stupid. That's my rant for the day. All right. Wow, that came off really clean. Is there even a gasket on that thing? Not really? Awesome. Yeah, there. you can't even see a gasket on this. Like, usually some trace of a paper gasket will be left behind, or even on here. But it looks like somebody used a real thin layer of silicone and didn't even wipe the oil off. They just stuck the thing on and just kind of hoped for the best. See, there's a reason why it's better to know what you're doing uh, on your own, because then at least you can fix whatever else some other stupid person has done to whatever they said they were going to fix for you. All right, so when you get in here, you get all the front bolts off, you pull the cover off, you pull all the back bolts off, you got just the main housing, tail housing, and that's it. Even that's got grease all over it. Jesus Christ. Like I said, also, you want a clean surface when you put your gaskets on, because at least then they'll stick. All right, so now we got to get this thing apart somehow. All right, finally got it apart by using a hammer and just going like this and smashing on it to break the, uh, it's not even silicone sealant, it's freaking glue at this point. Anyway, all right, so let's just, we got to find the right tools here. So, well, you'll need a pair of snap ring pliers, okay? You can get these at Napa. What you can do with it is this front bearing is held on with a snap ring, okay? You kind of go in there like that, and you widen her out, and it falls in. And you go and do it again. And there we go. Snap ring. Okay? Sorry. Can't see what I'm doing here. There we go. Tools go away. Next. All right, so in these three speeds, you can see reverse gear here. Got a snap ring. Actually, no, it's an E-clip. Sorry. Anyway, I know this video is a little bit dry and uh, kind of boring, but you know what? It might help you someday, especially if you're trying to do this sort of thing. What you do is you fling the snap ring, or the E-clip, all the way across the garage. You go looking for it for half an hour, and then you find it. All right, so then you got to move that with a pry bar or whatever. It might, not, it might just go forward. Now, if this bearing would come off, that would be even better. The front nose bearing on a transmission like this, like a Saginaw or Muncie or whatever, should not be pressed on. All it, you can you can work on one of these transmissions without needing a press for literally anything. Like there's nothing here that you would need a press for. I say that and I can't get the damn snout out of this thing. So anyway, I figured out the weight was on. There we go. Okay, snout bearing or input shaft bearing, whatever you want to call it. Got a little snap ring around it. Snap ring always goes to the outside. And you really can't screw up the uh, nose and tail shaft bearing on a Saginaw. Because I'm glad I dropped the bad one on the floor because I don't need that one anymore. Here's your nose, here's your input shaft, and here's your tail shaft push, or bearing. You see that they're very different sizes. Can't screw that up. Got to remember that this is the good one that I didn't drop on the floor. Anyway, so... Oof. In order to get this thing out, you've got to kind of wiggle it a little bit sideways there. Sorry, you're not going to be able to see a lot of this. Okay. What you really need to do is just get it out far enough to get this off. Right here, there is a, another snap ring holding the tail shaft bushing into the tail shaft housing. Right? So since i got to get that off to get this whole thing apart... I got it pulled out far enough, because obviously we're making contact with all sorts of stuff in here, like the reverse gear and all the synchros and all sorts of crap. So I got to get this off, and then pull the tail shaft off. Probably not the way to do this, but... Oh, hang on a second. Oh, 
all sorts of stuff falling over. Uh, I hope I'm not dropping grease in my crotch. That would be really bad, huh? There we go. One tail shaft. Anyway, all right, so how do you get this thing out? Your guess this is as good as mine. This is not a great tutorial video, is it? Okay. Since I am the world's biggest idiot, I forgot that you're supposed to take this pin and knock it out and then pull reverse gear out. And then your entire world is a lot better than mine. What am I doing here? Oh, I'm still mic'd up, aren't I? There's probably somebody out there going, what are you doing, you idiot? Well, to be fair, this thing wasn't rebuilt very well, and I have to make do with a lot of the stuff that I have. So we almost got this thing completely out. Uh, let's see. Oh, look at that. We got a spacer here. Uh, I'm not sure why that's in there. I've never seen one of those in a Saginaw. Anyway. Uh, sure, I don't have to take it all the way out, but we'll use this. There we go. There's our reverse gear. Got a little bushing on it. Looks pretty good. Should probably make sure I put it in the right way. When I'm done. Who knows? So that should allow us to kind of finagle this main shaft out. Yep, there we go. All right. That's not bad. Now, I'm not going to show you how to completely rebuild one of these because uh, that would be really time-consuming. And if you want to know, your cluster gear down here, it's got roller bearings in the front, in the back, and it's got a couple thrust washers in each end and a central rod that goes through the middle of it, which you can kind of see right here. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a pain in the ass. And uh, this one's brand new, so that should tell me. At least somebody tried to rebuild this thing. Uh, but, again, I guarantee you they didn't do a very good job because I'll show you this. There's all, oh, wow, yeah, there's all grease in those needle bearings. So that means this thing was rebuilt and never run because that's like axle grease. Like, check it out. So what I'm talking about here is you see this chunk. I found this in my brother's transmission. That's not what you want. You probably say, oh, well, it's on the drag side. Well, yeah, but... Or the coast side, I should say. But it's like, look, it's still missing a chunk. So what I'm going to do is take the transmission down here, yank that one apart, and then we're going to see if this one is any better. So here is the backup transmission that I'm using for parts. And it was full of oil, and it looks terrible. Then I'm like, huh, I wonder if it's actually bad. Yeah, I think it's pretty bad. Looks like second gear is not here. There's a lot of it missing. Oh yeah, the whole cluster gear is completely effed. So I wonder if third gear is any good. Let's see. I don't know, dude. She looks pretty good. All right, so that's really unfortunate because this transmission actually looks really nice. It just had a gear failure. That stinks. Anyway. Here's a lesson for you, kids. 
Rubber gloves don't stop you from getting cut by um, things that are about as sharp as a razor blade inside of a transmission. And there's a lot of them. I should probably get that looked at. It is going to be down my hand in about a second. Um, yeah, that'll get flagged. All right, so here's another tip for you. A lot of guys will take these speed speed uh, speedometer cable bullet or whatever the hell they call them and do this. Completely cover them in RTV or silicone or whatever. You don't need this crap, okay? What you need is one of these. This is easily found on eBay. You pay eight bucks for five of them. A seven eighths inch freeze plug. Take that, poke it in your speedometer hole, okay? Kind of work it in flat until it's flush, but you don't want to leave it there because that's not enough. So what you do is you go grab another hammer, take a ball peen hammer, you take the rounded end of it, you stick it on there like that, hit the other hammer with it until it's just inside this little shoulder and you're done. Sealed up. Don't need to worry about that anymore. So since I'm lazy, I'm going to take this tail shaft and put it on the transmission that I'm rebuilding for my brother because the tail housing bushing or tail shaft bushing or whatever you want to call it is the wrong one because it's in here and then you get the seal and basically it stops the yoke on the transmission, which is one of these, from going in all the way. Okay, this one, totally fine. See, goes in just fine. There's no play at all fine. The one that he has, which is this one right here, I can look at it and see it's, it's the wrong one. And you do this and yeah, it doesn't even go in. So that can go away and be a spare. This one, just fine. Probably replace the seal. No big deal. How to drop this thing into the tail shaft. Now what I, like the main shaft into the tail shaft. Now what I do is I just stick the tail shaft in the vise. Grab my snap ring pliers, wherever the heck I put those. Grab that snap ring, just spread it out, kind of steady it, because it will fall through. Open it up. Oh, there she goes. She's starting to go. Maybe I'll take a wooden part of a hammer and just lightly tap the top. You can't see the top, but the top don't really matter here, so. It's completely full of grease still. Uh, okay. You know what I need? As everything falls off my bench because my bench is an absolute mess just like everything else in this shop. Just a bigger hammer, that's all. There we go. Falls in, clips on the snap ring like that. Now, I don't think all my videos are going to be this boring to be honest with you, but some of these things you got to learn and some of these things you really should know if you're going to be a racer or if you're going to do it yourself or if you're going to figure out a lot of stuff and and save yourself a lot of money in the meantime by not having to go to a garage and not having to be reliant. You can be self-reliant. You don't have to rely on others. It's great. To put the input shaft third gear assembly on, just a tub of grease. Make sure this is wiped out inside so the grease will stick instead of having all oil in it. Grab a finger full of grease and just wipe the inside of the bearing race. Like I said, this isn't going to be that boring all the time, but this is, you know, when it comes to saving money, of course it's going to be a little bit dry and not so entertaining, but, you know, cut me a little slack. I'm saving you people a lot of time and money. Then you take your needle bearings that fell out and you, you lay them in to that bearing race right there. All right. All these needle bearings are now back in. They're not really small needle bearings. They're kind of big for needle bearings, but you see them all in there like that. That's how that works. Now, third gear obviously goes here. Now, I'm missing the synchro ring that goes here. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder where that went. Oh. <laughs> right where I left it. So, anyway. 
I'll put that in because there's three tangs on there. You see them. I kind of mate with these three little spring locks here or whatever you call them. I don't know the technical term for literally anything. I'm just kind of calling things as I see them. And I'm sure a lot of people will be like, that's not what it's called, you dummy. Yeah, well, I don't care. So the grease is going to hold these needle bearings in. Put your synchro in, make sure it's in the way. Make sure you get it as centered as possible. You don't want to disturb them. Slide right on, just like that. Perfect. Now let me move you to the other side so you can see how I put the uh, transmission case on. So anyway, you grab your black silicone like that. Give yourself a good gasket here. I'm not one of them tutorial people. I'm one of those entertainment people, but then again, if I can save you money, if I can help you out, I'll do that too. I swear it will be a little more interesting in the future. I, I you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, reverse gear. Slide that forward. Get your hand out of the way, obviously. Yeah. Slide that forward. There we go. Ew. Gross. All right, cool. So now you got to take your bolts, put them back in there so that it holds the damn casing back together. I'm putting the stock bolts back in because, again, who the hell uses cap screws? The only reason you'd use these cap screws to put the transmission back together that you rebuilt. It's just to try to look fancy. All right? You're not fancy. You're rebuilding a transmission. Just put the stock hardware back on there. That's my rant for today. Take a gun here. Zip those on. Another thing you don't want to forget, E-clip. On the reverse gear just like that this thing will spring all over the place luckily I got a spare push that oh geez that is harder than it looks there we go that'll re retain sorry I can't speak your reverse gear and I'm gonna clean this up and uh, then show you how to put the nose or the uh, Input shaft bearing on. All right, got the bearing in. Last step was getting this snap ring in, and I am the single worst person on earth to ever do snap rings because that always happens. I wonder how many times I'm going to get this a try before it actually goes in. Oh, I guess I did it. Great, good. As I was saying, I'm the best at snap rings. Uh, one try, that was it. All right, so now to put this thing on. Now, seal cover. Now, I know some people say, oh, you don't have seals in it. Well, what's that? You know what I mean? Come across the seal on everything. So these only typically go one way, all right? They're set up so that you can, it's got this little lip here or, or galleyway or whatever and there's a little hole here underneath so that it can help oil the front of the bearing and the seal and all that stuff so basically you got to kind of line those up and let's just see if i actually get it right this time yes i know i have to rtv it still i'm just making sure that uh, this thing will bolt in properly take a trusty silicone gun do the inside because these bolt do the inside and outside because these bolts are, in fact, not blind, like I thought. They do go into the housing, and they will leak. So when you put the bolts back in, good idea to put some of the silicone on those bolts as well. And again, I'm sure somebody out there is saying, why are you doing everything with an impact driver? Well, let's be fair. I'm lazy. Oh, you're going to strip it. Yeah, well, that's my uh, problem, isn't it? My fault, my problem. If you want to do it to exact torque specifications, you can feel free to do it. Is 
See, I'm not completely ramrodding this thing. It's fine. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with this. It's fine. Last step on today's project, at least, of rebuilding or rebuilding, quote unquote, fixing this transmission that was broken and built improperly. Put the door back on it. You gotta line these two forks up, make sure she's in neutral. Line the forks up. Drop her on there, make sure the pin goes in. And you're done. Now I can't find the right bolts because I think I pirated all of them for some other use, which I forget what it was now. So I got the stupid cap screws again. That is totally not the right size. Uh, next. And we're done. You can test the transmission like this. Take a block of wood, stick it onto the back end. Perfect. Use this yoke that's been taken off or whatever the hell you're doing with it. Hold it, move the nose. There, it works. Oh, that doesn't fit. Why don't we make that fit for once? Be gentle here. You don't want to break the ears off of this thing. So, go back. There's reverse. There's first. Here comes second. And third. Transmission works. So that'll end our first video with the relaunch of my YouTube channel. I hope you all uh, didn't find it at least too dry because, I mean, technical stuff and how-to videos are way too dry and boring. But, again, if it helps save you a ton of money and helps you get back on the racetrack or get your hot rod running again, then I hope it helped you a little bit. Uh, any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments below. And uh, I know we're going to have some fun. I got this race car here, and I got my diesel truck outside, which I'm sure everybody will be interested in who's a diesel guy. I'll give you the details on that later. Uh, it's not much done to it, but it is a fun little rig. Um, Racing is coming up within another month or so, so you'll see a couple more videos on this race car project and all sorts of stuff. And Maybe a few DIY projects. Maybe I'll paint the trailer and uh, some 20-year-old uh, truck bed liner. Who knows if that's going to work? Why not? We'll do something fun. So feel free to, again, leave a comment below. What would you like to see? I have no money, by the way. So don't ask me about see, like doing stuff like, oh, go do a junkyard revival or something. No, I don't have any money. I can barely pay my bills as it is. So don't ask me for a heck of a lot. Uh, but if it's something DIY... Maybe you could leave me a little comment about uh, maybe I screwed something up. You can help me out. Who knows? Uh, but feel free to subscribe. Help me grow the channel a little bit. Because, again, I'm not in this for any other reason other than just having a good time and sharing in a lot of my adventures and maybe helping somebody else along the way. We'll see what happens. But until next time, thanks for watching. Appreciate it.